Hey everyone! No, that's a weird story. <laughs> I felt a panic. I was like, oh, I've never done this before. It's like, it's fast count 70 something. Hey everyone, it's Jeff from What the f? I can't do it. What the hell? That's it. No, that's it. It's done. Hey everyone, it's Jack from WhatCulture.com. Excuse those first few botched attempts at the intro. I just kind of forgot how to do it for a second. Um, time for all the weekly news, I guess, from the world of wrestling. Oh, this is serious though. Um, well, we'll be looking, of course, at all the WWE news, but then when we get to the other news from elsewhere in the world of wrestling, there is some very, very sad news indeed. I'm not going to say too much. We'll see later on in the video what it is, but it's really, it's really kind of affected me a little bit. Hopefully, hopefully everything's all right, but man. But anyway, let's get straight into it. This is the Fast Count. First, as always, let's start off with all of this week's WWE news. What the f was that? What was that? I have no idea. What popped? Is the roof gonna. What the f was that? No, I don't like this. First of all, you might have heard the news that Roman Reigns and Enzo Amore have had a bit of a falling out backstage. Um, let's just elaborate on that a little bit in a second. Now, recently news broke that Roman Reigns, who is now kind of a locker room leader figure, um, has, has well, he threw Enzo Amore off a, off a tour bus at one point. Uh, now details have emerged. According to the Wrestling Observer newsletter, Enzo was being very loud on the phone on this coach or tour bus and was making sort of disparaging remarks about the business apparently maybe and also bragging about how much money he's making through it. And Roman took exception to this as well as a few others and Roman kind of made him get off the bus. Um, I don't like to dwell for too long on stories about heat backstage because I'm guessing every situation that we hear about is simplified far, far, far more than the actual situation itself. Everyone knows that when you're in a situation and there's some sort of drama, there's a lot more nuance and everything than meets the eye. But if this story does, you know, <clears throat> ring true slightly, then uh, it spells bad news for Enzo because even though this incident apparently happened a little while ago, um, he is, you know, the tag team with Cass has broken up. He is apparently now not in favour in the back, and yeah. it was also acknowledged on Bring It To The Table with JBL and Corey Graves, uh, and it might well be true. So it's not looking hopeful for Enzo. Hopefully he can turn it round if he needs to improve his attitude. Hopefully he can do that, um, and hopefully finds a niche for himself without big cast. Maybe, maybe on 205 Live, maybe as just primarily a manager or a mouthpiece for someone else. I saw a theory on Reddit that someone said where they were like, Enzo could well uh, get involved on SmackDown after the shakeup in the Carmella storyline, coming along as like Carmella's old friend and really annoying uh, really annoying James Ellsworth, which would be quite a funny storyline. I'd like to see that dynamic play out. But um, that's really the best thing I can think of so far. And it looks to be quite a tricky situation for Enzo Amore indeed. Secondly, looking ahead to SummerSlam on August 20th in Brooklyn. Um, Bailey has apparently received a bit of a shoulder injury after injuring herself on Monday Night Raw uh, against Nia Jax. Now, we don't know the details on how injured Bailey is or whether she'll be able to recover in time. If she does, great. She can still have that title match with Alexa Bliss. If not, then that's obviously a big shame for her. And as well, who would step in to take her place? I mean, Sasha Banks seems the only legitimate sort of alternative contender. She lost the number one contendership match to Bailey and is also very over as well. So Sasha's the only real replacement I can see. Uh, if, you know, worst comes to worst and she is injured and does have to miss that big marquee match, then at least uh, it can sort of feed into the kind of babyface comeback storyline, I guess. Give Bailey something to really fight for uh, rather than just being like every week, oh, I'm living my dream, I'm doing what I want. It's like, you've been women's champion already. You're one of the best NXT champions ever. It, it doesn't really makes sense to me, but hopefully she's okay. And finally, let's close out the WWE section with just a few updates on the main events of SummerSlam. Firstly, uh, the WWE Championship match between the champion Jinder Mahal, still sounds weird, and the challenger Shinsuke Nakamura. Now there are rumors floating around out there that Nakamura could win only to be cashed in on by Baron Corbin, thereby furthering their feud, which has failed to impress so far, I think it's fair to say. So make of that what you will. Over on the Raw side of things, of course, I'm sure you've heard by now, but it's worth mentioning again, uh, that four-way match for the Universal Championship, Brock Lesnar, Braun Strowman, Roman Reigns, and Samoa Joe, uh, that match will now, if Lesnar loses, see him and Heyman leave WWE, which feeds brilliantly into the whole real-life storyline of Lesnar angling for another UFC fight, probably against Jon Jones. So 
That's very interesting, especially coupled with the fact that Heyman has reportedly been pushing backstage for Samoa Joe to get a run with the title. Um, very intriguing situations um, in both sides of the kind of the Raw and SmackDown scene heading into SummerSlam, but the fact remains that I think it looks like it could be a very promising card indeed. And now it's time. Why are you so broken today? I don't know. <laughs> just feel like when my Hardy bit my ear off, he just took a part of me with him. And now it's time for all the news from elsewhere. Calm it down in the wacky world of professional wrestling. Let's see what's been happening outside of the Fed. Now I've done that cheeky thing again where I've included some NXT news in the other news section. I'm very sorry, but I think you'll agree it is worth mentioning absolutely because a massive indie star has made his debut in NXT to a big reception. No one knew he was going to be wrestling and it was Kyle O'Reilly. He had a very impressive match with Alistair Black, formerly known as Tommy End on the indies. Uh, and. Black picked up the victory, which I, I agree with. Kind of takes the wind out of the sails of O'Reilly's debut a tiny bit because uh, he lost his debut match. But at the same time, uh, Black's undefeated streak is probably the bigger priority right now. Uh, remember, it's worth mentioning that this did happen to Black himself under the name Tommy End when he was a surprise opponent for Neville during the UK dates, uh, during that whole UK title tournament and all that stuff. Um, he lost to Neville in his debut match for the company and it's still kind of... Was it his debut match? I'm not sure if it was his actual debut, but it's certainly one of his first matches for the company, and it still turned out really well for him. So hopefully, this doesn't really pose too much of an obstacle for Kyle O'Reilly. He is one of the best wrestlers in the world. And now it's time for that sad news that I talked about in the intro. Over on Impact Wrestling, Moose has lost the Impact Wrestling Grand Championship, or GWF Grand, he's lost his belt to EC3, if we can just all, just have a second. Now this is part of, a, of a, an angle that I su suspect will cause a bit of a stir. Um, I sound like I'm actually gonna cry. <laughs> no, I'm, uh, um, this, is good. this is part of an angle that's gonna cause a bit of a stir, I imagine, because that belt is defended under kind of weird pseudo MMA rules where like, if it's a draw at the end of three rounds of pro wrestling, still, it uh, goes to a judge's decision. Uh, they were tied, headed into the, into the last round, and then two of the judges gave it a 10-10 decision. One of the judges was actually um, Dutch Mantel, and then the third judge was Bruce Pritchard, and he gave it 10-8, and it was the whole point of it was like, this is clearly corruption. EC3 has somehow gotten Pritchard in his pocket, and then has got him to win the belt for him. So like, <clears throat> there wasn't really a pinfall, it was a dodgy decision at the end, kind of it was one of those things where you watch it and you think this doesn't really belong in pro wrestling. It's too, it's not wrestling enough. It's too, it's too MMA. But at the same time, maybe it's one of those things that'll get better and gain traction as it goes on. To be honest, I never really agreed with the concept of that title when it was first introduced, but maybe they can make something good of it. But the, the big, big takeaway here is that Moose has lost, has lost his title. And we all love Moose here at What Culture. He is one of our favorites. And I just hope I hope you get it back, Moose, mate. I hope you get it back. Moose, Phil. Mm -hmm. Moose, he did it as well, and I hope you did as well. And finally, oh my God, guess who rocked up in Lucha Underground? So Johnny Mundo is the champion, right? Okay, do you know what's happened? You already, I've already mentioned this. So right, Johnny Mundo is the champion, feuding with Rey Mysterio, and this week on Lucha Underground, guess who got involved? Prince Puma. Dominic Mysterio, his son, do you remember? Do you remember the custody of Dominic Ladder match? Do you remember that there? I put it up there. Like, that was one of the best stipulations of all time. <laughs> Whoever can climb the ladder, <laughs> the custody of Dominic. I felt so sorry for Eddie Guerrero in that match because Vicky missed her cue, and you remember Eddie being like, where the f is Vicky? <laughs> Oh man, not one of the high points in Eddie Guerrero's glittering career. And Eddie's got like, he's one of my favorites ever. And Ray as well. And it was just one of those ones that was a bit, a little bit too Russo for the time, I think. But Dominic's back. Uh, Johnny Mundo was leaving the arena. Dominic was, was there. I don't know if his last name is actually Mysterio. It'll be Guerrero. Oh, Gu Gu Guti, uh, Gutierrez. Gutierrez is Mysterio's actual last name. But Dominic Mysterio, it's funny. Um, Johnny's like leaving the arena with his belt. He's like, oh, he sees him. He's like, oh, Dominic, what's up, man? Didn't recognize you. You've got big. And Dominic's like, yeah, I have. And then they, he's like, your old man's got nothing on me. Dominic gets up. He's massive. He's so built. He's so tall now. Like, what the f 
happened? He's like right in, and I think in a real fight he could destroy Johnny Mundo. But then there's a bit of a scuffle, Mundo hits him with the belt. Dominic Mysterio is involved in a storyline in each underground and I could not be more happy if this leads to a ladder match. Oh, I'm gonna calm down because it's time to take a serious look. What are you gonna do this time, man? It's gonna be super serious. Yeah? Yeah, promise. Super ethereal. <laughs> My wrestler of the week. The wrestler of the week. The wrestler of the week. The wrestler of the week. Mary had a the wrestler of the week. His fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, Mary went, Mary went, and everywhere that Mary went, the wrestler of the week. My wrestler of the week this week, I, I actually changed my mind twice in the past few days. First of all, it was going to be Kota Ibushi, who I gave it to a couple of weeks ago, uh, because he had another great match in the G1, which is still going on. Uh, he beat Tanahashi, really good match. He just kneed his face off. That was the finish. It was great. Um, I thought, yes, Ibushi, no one's going to top that. Then it was going to be Kyle O'Reilly after his impressive debut, even though he lost in NXT. And then last night, I watched Chapter 53 of Progress, which went out on their on-demand service this week. So I'm kind of counting it as a match that kind of happened this week, became available to the general public this week. And man, the main event was Keith Lee versus Travis Banks. And Keith Lee is a monster. It should come as no surprise to anyone who's watched that match that Keith Lee is my wrestler of the week because he is so strong and agile. If you've watched the US leg of our Pro Wrestling World Cup, you will see what a freak Keith Lee is. Like, he's so strong. At one stage of this match in progress, Travis Banks leapt out of the ring, suicide dive. Keith Lee held him. His feet didn't touch the floor. It was insane. Scooped him up, powerbomb on the apron. It was one of many brilliant, brilliant spots in that match. At one point, he just carted him into the crowd, everyone had moved, and he landed about six rows back on a pile of chairs. It was unbelievable, a great match, loved it. Um, Keith Lee won, which I think is a bit of a controversial decision because Travis Banks is the number one contender to Pete Dunne's Progress Championship, but at the same time, Pete Dunne did cause a bit of a distraction, so it wasn't entirely clean. Um, Keith Lee, check him out if you haven't already. He's wrestled quite a lot in Evolve as well, I think, and of course, our WCPW US qualifiers, what a guy. He is my wrestler of the week. So that's all for this week on The Fast Count. Thank you very much for watching. I have been Jack from WhatCulture.com. Leave your opinions in the comments section down below. What did you think of any of the new stories we've discussed? Or maybe some that we haven't as well. Uh, there was one that I missed out about uh, Paige suggesting that she'll be going back to WWE soon on a radio uh, segment hosted by Bully Ray. But at the same time, uh, we did a separate video about that, which you can find on the same channel. So if you want to check that out, have a look at that. But for now, there's not much more to say. I'll see you soon.